how to use the flow widget in Flutter to create beautiful animations and also use the flow widget to coordinate multiple similar animation widgets easily together. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's start to build our flow widget inside of the scaffold body property. Therefore, we want to create here a new widget and inside of this widget, we want to create then a flow widget. Next, we want to use the children property to build here a list of icons and therefore we convert these icons with the help of a build item method from this icon to a floating action button and we display this icon simply in our floating action button. And finally, we want to give our floating action button a specific size and the size we define here then at the top. So all in all, we have created here three floating action buttons and the specialty about this flow widget is that you can now decide how each of the children is displayed on this phone screen and therefore you simply create here a new delegate and this is what you create inside of a new class and you need to extend the flow delegate. If you do so, then you need to override here two methods, the paint children method and the should repaint method. And lastly, inside the paint children method, you can then define how each of your floating action buttons should be painted on the screen. So here we paint, for example, the first one, which is here this mail icon. Later, we will also paint here the other icons on the screen. Therefore, we go to the paint children method and here we build then our first item, which is here this mail icon. And if I simply hot reload right now, then you see here this floating action button within the scaffold body property on the top left corner of the screen. And next you can then define how this widget should be aligned on the screen. So you can define here the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and now you will see that this is moving. And if you like, you can also display then here the other widgets. Therefore, you simply create here every time a different index. And this will then simply take a different index out of this children list. As a result, we have two more floating action buttons and I have also positioned each of them here differently on the screen. Next, we want to align all of these widgets together in a line and we also want to animate them. Therefore, instead of drawing each item individually, we want to create here a for loop and with this context child count, we get then basically the count of all the children that we have inside of this flow children property. So all in all, with the help of this counter, we are iterating through the children and we are drawing each one separately. Next, we want to define where we want to draw our children. Therefore, we want to draw them next to each other and therefore it is helpful to get here the size of each of our floating action buttons. And by multiplying the child size with our counter, we draw now all of our items next to each other like you can see. And if you like, you can also put here some spacing in between your items. Therefore, I add here a margin and I set here, for example, the margin to eight pixels. As a result, we have some spacing between our widgets. Next, we want to align our widgets at the bottom. Therefore, you can simply take here from the context the size property. And from the size, we want to subtract then the button size of our floating action button, which we have defined initially here at the top. And next we use then the fields x start and y start for determining here a new x coordinate and y coordinate, whereas we simply replace here them at the bottom. As a result, the floating action buttons are at the bottom placed next to each other. And we have now used here the x start and y start coordinates. So if I put it only to x start and y start, then you see we have only one button. And we have also used here this other field that we have calculated before so that we place all of the buttons next to each other. And secondly, if you want to display your widgets vertically, then you simply put it here to the y coordinate instead. And with this, you see that the buttons are displayed on top of each other. And lastly, we only need to animate here our floating action buttons. Therefore, in our flow widget within the children property, we add another icon, which is the menu icon. In our state, we want to create then an animation controller with which we can do the animation. And we simply create it within our init state method and dispose it within the dispose method. 
Also, to make use of this WeSync, you need to go to your state and here inside you add the single ticker provider state mixin. Next, we can use the animation controller for creating our animation. Therefore, we put this animation controller into our delegate class. And also within the delegate class, we create then a constructor where we get then this animation controller. And finally, we multiply then the change of our button position with this controller value. And this value is a value between zero and one. So if I put here a value of zero inside, then you see this is our initial state where all of our buttons are on top of each other. And otherwise, if I put here a higher value inside, so for example, zero five, then you see this is here part of the animation and the animation will end at the value of one. So this is then our final state. Let's put again back the controller value. And now we want to change this value between zero and one. And therefore we simply go to our floating action button. And here we call the forward method to start the animation. And with this, if I click here on this button, you see we have this cool animation. And if I click again on this button, then we also want to reverse the animation. Therefore, if the animation is here completed, then we want to re simply reverse the animation. Let's also try it out. If I click on this button, then it is shrinking or we have an expanding animation. However, like you notice this menu item here at the bottom is changing. So on top of it, we have then this other item. Therefore, we simply need to draw here each of these items into the opposite direction. Therefore, we go here from the last item to the first item. As a result, we draw the menu item always on the top and all the other items are then behind this menu item. And of course, within your main file, you can also display it inside of the scaffold floating action button property where the floating action button normally belongs to. And with this, you see that we have here a different position for our floating action button. And of course, within the paint children method, you can also change the axis of your floating action buttons. So I put it also to the X coordinate and multiply it with a value of 0.7. As a result, all of our floating action buttons are displayed diagonal and I can also animate into this direction. Also, you could remove the change on the Y axis. As a result, the floating action buttons are only on the X coordinate. In the next video, we will use the flow widget to create a more complex floating action button animation. And this is pretty easily done with some more lines of code.